There's a lot of incredible people all around the world who fight and give their lives for justice and for peace and in the name of love. And they are rarely recognized, rarely. And so often they do it and they, they're not only not acknowledged for it, but they're spat upon and just tortured for it. But here, at the Canadian School of Peace Building, we are given a space to be able to connect with people who are wanting to acknowledge and walk alongside people who, who are taking peace seriously and who are wanting to change the world through this. You meet different people, you meet interesting people, you meet people who really understand and who have the passion about the world and about peace. I think one central thing about this School of Peace for me has been the understanding of the world issues um, around peace. I'm optimistic also uh, when I encounter uh, uh, indigenous, non-indigenous students, when I, when I engage the students in my own class here at uh, the Canadian School of Peace Building, I am very optimistic that in this country there are, there are students out there in post-secondary education institu institutions who, th who are thirsting for knowledge about our people, indigenous people, who want to understand, not for the sake of just understanding what happened, but they want to understand to make things different. They want to contribute to our well-being as a people. And that's the contribution that they want to make to their country. Because what they see is that their country is the potential of Canada uh, to, become a, uh, to become a leader in the world in, in, for human rights or for peace is, in, is going to be impeded unless they deal with the issues of the First Nations, the Métis and Inuit within, within Canada. I think every region and every cultural group that gets involved brings special talents and special experience. And uh, to me, it's pretty vital. And all of that has been a tremendous learning experience for me and just enriches my own um, practice and theory building. Canadian School of Peace Building has been great in terms of off offering the opportunity for us to really do some uh, thoughtful reflection and to provide information and expertise um, on the issues that uh, we're looking at. There's a lot of opportunity to talk about your own cases and your own struggles and what you have difficulties in and then hearing other people in the class bringing so many different perspectives, both religious and seculars and more spiritual approaches um, to how to look at the situation. I think was very, very valuable um, because sometimes when you are in a certain place, it's hard. You need to go outside in order to to look at the issue. Like Gimbal said, it was learning about relationship building, but also actually doing it in class because while sharing those experiences, you did build relationships with each other, right? And um, just it was a re very reassuring that there are more people out there who are concerned about the same things as you are, so you're not alone, and you can just help each other out and build connections and like Mark Gopin said, network and build those, create those um, connectors where you can actually then, you know, help each other out whether, whether I go back home or I'm in Toronto or I'm somewhere else. That doesn't matter, you still have those, those relationships to fall back on and hopefully um, benefit from and help each other out. And the bottom line of, um, you know, without sounding Pollyannish, uh, that it's all about building relationships, that, that peace, at the end of the day, it's hard to maintain or to pursue or to have if we don't have relationship and we don't humanize the other. Because a lot of lack of peace has to do with dehumanizing the other. And it's hard to dehumanize the other if you have a relationship with them. So relationship is really, is really key. I think it's an incredible um, opportunity to bring together people that are involved in the work of building peace from different places that wouldn't otherwise get a chance to come together and share stories. And, and they are, of course, their own best resource for each other. And in my experience, it's not easy to find these sorts of opportunities where people come from disparate places and have enough time together that they're able to move into a layer of um, 
honesty and um, frankness in their conversation and, and vulnerability. Uh, we don't get that kind of space at a conference or at uh, an event that just lasts for a few days. So one of the things that I'm very much appreciating about the Canadian School of Peacebuilding is that people have enough time to develop relationships. I think peace builders are working so hard on the ground they often don't have the opportunities to learn from each other. And so if we can create some space to create an oasis of peace, to encourage them, to inspire them, to equip them, even to challenge them, provoke them to uh, be peace in, in more and more bold ways, I think this will be a wonderful thing. In building peace, it's very often the one-to-one -one relationships and those personal connections that make things work. And so when you get people from, from groups that are often seen as being opposed to each other or that are maybe in conflict with each other, that gives you a chance to start breaking down those barriers. For anybody who wants to come and to understand what peace is all about, the, about it in the world, this is the right place to come. I mean, you meet people who have worked in um, South America, Africa, Asia, China, India, so a very good uh, diverse groups of people that you meet and uh, yeah, exciting. To participate in a school like this, it's, it's a privilege and it's a gift and if you've been given that gift, take it and go hard.